good morning to you. It is Wednesday, middle of the week. Yeah. We made it. It's May 13th, 2020. Yeah, halfway through the work week mm -hmm. and uh, you haven't been washed away yet, so that's good. True. Yes. Yeah. You were I, making fun of me. I got out my like rain <laughs> boots yesterday because I was like, yeah. I listened to your forecast. You mean you didn't need rain boots. Okay. Well, it was if a you, little excessive, little excessive compared I think, to but. like my dress my heels, well, I would okay, rather yeah, walk I around in rain boots. Right, but I, th I think just tennis shoes would have been, would have sufficed. gotten wet. Sloppy. Nah. Anyways, <laughs> on the weather scene here this morning, uh, still tracking pretty cloudy conditions out there. U.S. Bank ICAM reading in at 37 degrees here this morning. 33 in Cut Bank right now. Lewistown sitting at 38. We are still going to see some uh, rain today. Likely more this afternoon. Nowhere near as much as what we saw yesterday and no snow today either. Just kind of rain in the mix as we check out the Opportunity Bank ICAM in the capital. Uh, unfortunately, the temperature gauge there at the airport still down. Lincoln sitting at about 40 degrees and uh, Clancy right now at 39 hour by hour forecast. Pretty cloudy out there. Afternoon showers are likely throughout the area as uh, we still have some lingering moisture to deal with. So lingering rain today begins to warm up though tomorrow and Kind of a fairly mild weekend on tap, but there's some catches. We'll tell you about those coming up very shortly, Shannon. There's always some type of catch, isn't there, in the spring. Thanks, Jason. There are two new coronavirus cases in Montana. That brings our statewide total to 460. Right now, just 19 of those are active. State officials reported new cases Tuesday in Cascade and Bighorn counties. The Cascade County case involves a man in his 30s. In Bighorn County, a woman in her 20s tested positive. 425 cases, or about 92% of the state total, are considered recovered. In the race to develop a coronavirus vaccine, the biotech company Moderna says it got a fast-track designation from the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration grants the status to speed up the review of urgently needed testing and treatments. Moderna says it will proceed with the next phase of clinical trials in early summer. Here at home, Helena public school leaders say they're planning for in-person graduation ceremonies with some restrictions, but they could still have to make some changes based on coronavirus. Superintendent Tyler Ream laid out the district's plans Tuesday at a school board meeting. They're currently looking at holding full, uh, full school graduations for Helena and Capitol High School. Each student would be allowed two guests at the ceremony, but they would be also streamed online. Reem said all students and guests would have to sit at least six feet apart, wear masks, and confirm they haven't been experiencing any COVID symptoms. If the situation with the virus becomes worse, the district could hold two smaller ceremonies per day. Reem said this plan will rely on students and families following guidelines. As the state starts to reopen, employment officials are getting Montanans back on their feet. Express Employment Professionals says they help both employers and job seekers in the Great Falls area. They've been hard at work through this outbreak, connecting essential workers and those in skilled trades with employers. Brian McKinney with Express Employment says associates have been working remotely but are still hiring. We have a, a person that comes to us with uh, really desirable skills. We'll actually advocate for them and we will reach out to employers while they're actually in our office and try to land them a position. The office also has free online classes for those wanting to sharpen their job seeking skills. They're connecting employers with qualified workers every day through remote hiring and phone interviews. McKinney suggests applying online for work through the agency's website and we do have a link to that on our website. Whether you've been fired, laid off, maybe furloughed, millions of Americans are in need of work right now. Luckily, there are a number of employers looking to hire during this time. Pizza places, fast food restaurants are posting positions, one Taco Bell, even putting wanted flyers in customers' bags. And let's not forget about all that online shopping that people have been doing from home. FedEx has over 850 positions that it's looking to hire. Discount places like Dollar General and Dollar Tree have remained open during the outbreak in many places, and they're still hiring. Pharmacies are another good place to look. CVS has reported sales have been through the roof there. And with so many offices and buildings forced to close, demands for private security to watch over these places have gone up. One company, Securitas, is encouraging those who have been furloughed from other jobs to apply. Some more places you'll want to check out include education, technology, entertainment, and manufacturing. 
Montana Senator John Tester is rolling out what he calls a rancher relief program, a trio of bills and actions designed to help hard hit Montana cattle producers get better prices and markets for their product. Montana's other U.S. Senator, Republican Steve Daines, is also on board with the efforts. Tester and Republican Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa introduced a bill to require large meat packers to buy at least half their cattle on the cash market. Tester says it would make it harder for packers to manipulate prices and increases the price paid to feedlots and producers. Tester also is pushing to include language in any upcoming coronavirus relief bills to allow Montana meat processors to sell their product outside the state. Danes and Tester are renewing a push to reinstate country of origin labeling for meat produced in America. You can look at me, I eat a lot of meat, and I'll tell you if I knew it was coming from the United States versus Brazil or Argentina, I'm, I'm picking up that package that has made USA on it every time. As he hopes there is enough bipartisan pressure on Senate leadership to take up these proposals. Well, a woman who entered Yellowstone National Park illegally was badly burned. Park officials say it happened after she fell into a thermal feature near Old Faithful. They say the woman was backing up to take a photo and fell into the feature. A spokeswoman says it's unclear right now exactly which hot spring or other feature she may have tumbled into. The woman then left Old Faithful and drove north towards Mammoth. Park rangers stopped her about a mile south of Mammoth Hot Spring. The woman was taken to the Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center by helicopter. Yellowstone has been closed to visitors since March 30th. Well, following up on a late Monday night apartment fire in Great Falls, the Red Cross is helping out a few people who have been displaced. Great Falls Fire Rescue tells us the cause is still undetermined at this time. Crews arrived on scene to find flames coming out of the six unit apartment building around 1030 Monday night. Fire Rescue says that all of the units were not occupied in that building and most of the damage was contained to one apartment. No injuries were reported. Online shopping sees a major jump with millions stuck at home. I'm Michelle Medina with a look at how that could change the future of retail sales. And later in your weather forecast, yes, yeah, some rain in the forecast, but nowhere near what we were tracking yesterday. 37 in Great Falls, uh, the capital again, temperature gauge at the airport not working for us. So a couple of lingering showers here today, most of which will be this afternoon, much more scattered, much more isolated. We'll take a closer look at the forecast coming up shortly. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. Stores in some states are reopening, but weeks of shutdown saw a big jump in people shopping online. It's a trend that could continue. CBS's Nichelle Medina looks inside the numbers. Steven Singer Jewelers in Philadelphia is closed because of the coronavirus, but sales continue. The online orders have skyrocketed. It doesn't compensate for all the in-store orders that we've missed, but um, it's nice to see that we're able to help people. Online shopping is growing with millions of stores shut down. April uh, represented a 49% increase in e-commerce sales over March. John Copeland from Adobe Analytics says sales for electronics jumped and leisure clothing got a boost. In apparel, we're seeing really a shift to comfort. So uh, pajamas, as a matter of fact, increased over 143% month over month. It's not surprising web traffic increased for stores that had to close, but even industries that kept their doors open during the pandemic saw more customers move online. E-commerce purchases for alcohol increased 74% and more people shopped online for groceries up 110%. I think for a while it is going to be the new normal, even as people begin to leave their homes and go back and start shopping. That's bad news for struggling brick and mortar stores. Several recently announced plans to file for bankruptcy. What we are seeing is people getting increasingly comfortable making their purchasing decisions and deliveries online. It's one shopping trend expected to have a lasting impact on a growing number of businesses. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, San Diego. Wall Street dropped on Tuesday amid worries about warnings from health experts. The Dow fell 457 points. The Nasdaq was down 189. The S&P 500 lost 60. 
Moderators that help keep us from seeing disturbing video on Facebook are getting $52 million from the social media giant. It's part of a settlement from a 2018 lawsuit. U.S.-based moderators say repeatedly watching graphic videos like child sex abuse, animal cruelty, terrorism, and more took its toll. They say Facebook didn't do anything to protect them from psychological damages. Each moderator, part of the lawsuit, will get $1,000. Those who were diagnosed with conditions can get medical treatment and damages up to $50,000. The social networking giant is also removing nearly 5 million posts connected to hate organizations in the first three months of the year. Facebook said it's relying more on technology to help identify and remove hateful content. In its latest community standards enforcement report, the company added that it put warning labels on about 50 million pieces of content related to COVID-19. Gun makers and dealers are fighting a lawsuit that would hold them partially responsible for the Vegas massacre. Usually, federal law protects shops and gun makers when crimes are committed with their products, but a U.S. judge is asking Nevada's highest court to decide if state law could override that. The lawsuit names eight firearm manufacturers and several gun shops in Nevada and Utah. A hearing for the case has not yet been set. Up next year, weather forecast. We are tracking more rain today. Taking a look back at yesterday, 40 was the daytime high. 64 would be the average. As for precipitation, just shy of about a half an inch is what we put, uh, picked up in Great Falls. Well ahead for the year. Temperatures in the capital looking at about uh, 52 yesterday was the daytime high compared to the average of 60s, uh, upper 60s there. Not much though in the way of rain yesterday. Nothing reading in. More on your forecast is coming up next. Welcome back 516 here on your Wednesday morning and if you're uh, looking for a good way to maybe do a little social distancing and travel at the same time, maybe a new RV is in your future. <laughs> yeah, according to Pierce RV Supercenter in Great Falls, their sales have actually been on the upswing. They tell us the rise started about two weeks after the coronavirus outbreak started. The owner tells us that ever since local campgrounds were opened, it's been pretty hectic, but if you live in Montana, you have the upper hand. I know the states open their campgrounds, but the national parks and campgrounds are not opened yet. So with that being said, I think uh, Montanans are going to have a better chance to camp uh, because there's going to be openings. Now he adds that getting parts has been a little bit more challenging since one of their manufacturers has been closed. So uh, that's yeah. a good thing to keep in mind, too, that even yeah. though maybe some places are opening, the supply for some of these right. places might change. Right. But yeah, that's one thing I didn't understand with the whole coronavirus is like closing down campgrounds. Like the point of camping is to get away to from get away. everybody. Sure. And like, get some fresh that's air. That's like social distancing at its finest, right? Right. <laughs> well, and in Montana too, it's not like we have the crowds of people. No, no, at, it's not. You know, at some places right, or right. campgrounds, even though you are distanced, you are there are right. crowded. Right. So. Stacked on yeah, top of each right. other. But I mean most of like the forest service campgrounds stuff around here, I mean it, it You're away you got from some people. distance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it would be know. uh if you were going camping really anytime in the next like last few days next few days eh. yeah not looking not, great yeah not well most it's enjoyable. like a roller coaster ride yeah. we get one day of sun and then we get rain one day of sun we get rain still tracking some lingering showers today could even see some thunderstorms so what you're looking at here is the thunderstorm outlook basically the national weather service issues these and all we're looking at today is pretty much the possibility of non severe thunderstorms and the main reason behind that is we've got a little bit more warm air to work with, which could kind of kick things off for us. Uh, visibility at this hour, not bad. There is some patchy fog out there, so that's something we'll kind of keep an eye on this morning as well. Currently on the Doppler, a uh, little bit of snow still over the mountains. We'll continue to see scattered showers throughout the state here today. So cloudy skies, isolated scattered showers. Some cells are going to gain a little bit of strength, as you notice there, into central and eastern Montana. We've got just enough warm air to work with that that's going to kick off a little bit of afternoon convection and maybe possibly uh, kick off some of those stronger thunderstorms this afternoon as well. And, and I shouldn't even say stronger, it's more garden variety. 57 for your daytime high today, finally starting to crawl out of that, uh, not Arctic plunge, but chilly conditions that we've seen over the past couple of days. 61 in the capital today, looking at the mid-60s throughout the eastern plains. Overnight lows still a little bit chilly, but staying above freezing for pretty much every location across the state. Looking at the mid-30s along the High Line, same story for Great Falls, much more mild in the capital tonight at 39. Tomorrow, 
All of those storms are going to stay well out of our area as conditions continue to dry up. We're going to see temperatures climb 65 on Thursday, 66 in the capital, finally back on track with average and looking at the upper 60s and 70s throughout the eastern plains. And here's what we got going on. So on Thursday, tomorrow, some weak high pressure is going to move over the state. That's going to keep us relatively clear and keep a lot of that moisture well out of our area. However, we do have another area of low pressure that's going to be moving in on Friday. That's going to get things a little bit cloudy, kick off some showers for us, but it's a bit of a one day only sale. Once Saturday rolls around, high pressure is going to rebuild. That's going to move that area of low pressure on its way and keep us pretty mild Saturday. However, Sunday we are keeping our eye on another area of low pressure. There's that roller coaster ride we were telling you about. It's going to get us a little bit cloudy right now. It looks like a lot of that first wave of moisture is going to kind of break apart, but it is going to open up the door for more showers next week. So here's how that's going to play out over the next seven days today. Uh, not bad sitting at 57 lingering showers, more sun than you'll notice Friday, a little bit uh, rainy out there yet again. Right now, Saturday, first part of Sunday, not looking bad, but then that area of low pressure moves in and gets us rainy again next week. Shannon. All right, thanks, Jason. It's 521 on your Wednesday. Still to come on Montana this morning, special delivery. Some puppies were escorted to Great Falls on Tuesday. We'll meet them up next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back 523 on the clock and thanks for sticking with us here on Montana this morning. Well, there was a special delivery Tuesday afternoon in Great Falls. I like this kind of delivery. <laughs> Three puppies arrived by plane and were greeted by their new trainers. The dogs came from Santa Rosa, California. They'll spend the next year and a half being raised by volunteer canine companions. The organization is dedicated to helping people with disabilities by providing highly trained assistance dogs at no charge to them. Kim Monroe is the chapter president for the Northwest. Oh, look at that face. For the Northwest <laughs> region. She says it's hard to eventually give the dogs up, but it's worth it knowing they go on to help others. We when we give them up, it's really hard. It's like sending your child off to college. It's, it's the best way that I can tell somebody um, we love them. We prepare them for that adventure, that next step in their journey that they are going to take. And they are all um, happy dogs when they walk away. I always think, are they going to look back at me? And they never do. You hand them to the trainer and they just walk with their heads high, their tails wagging, and they become somebody else's miracle. Yeah, dogs, dogs are better than better at that than us as far as like letting go. Oh, moving 100%, on. <laughs> yeah, moving so, on. Right, mm -hmm. so Monroe says the organization is always looking for volunteer puppy raisers. There's more Ooh. information on our website. That's I was dangerous. Say, Shannon, are you getting Jason's any ideas like, oh, here? Oh boy, like, we're gonna have like there's already two dogs. dogs at our house. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can handle is, any more. Mm, I know. Part of me wants to just have a ranch with. Could you imagine like a bunch everywhere. of little puppies crawling around on Hunter? Oh my gosh. I think he would just hate it. Like Watson I, would be all about it. I think. I don't know. Watson might get annoyed. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I just think Hunter would just probably be annoyed as well. Yeah, he's kind of he's a little kind of old an old man. man so yeah. yeah. But, but they're so cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I, and what we didn't hear in the story was some of the some of the plans had changed. Some people um, ended up volunteering to help bring those dogs here. Obviously, there were right changes on. in travel because of coronavirus mm -hmm. and things like that. So kind of a neat other element. People are still getting to have those yeah. those puppies. They're still getting trained despite coronavirus. Right so. on. Yeah, always a good good deal mm -hmm. there. And uh, yeah, it was kind of funny watching those dogs with all the snow <laughs> yesterday. Oh, like, yes. What did I get myself mm -hmm. into? Uh, looking at the mid 30s along the high line, kind of cloudy and there is some patchy fog out there as we're dealing with pretty uh, high humidity levels here this morning. 37 in Great Falls. Again, the temperature gauge at the airport in Helena is not working for us. So <laughs> rain continues today. Uh, then we're going to kind of calm things down a little bit with a couple of showers returning on Friday. So kind of hit or miss on whether you need to throw a little water on things. Saturday probably wouldn't hurt just to kind of keep the moisture in the ground there. Uh, over the next couple of days here, 57 today, and uh, then we're back up to the mid 60s, but we're going to kind of take a dive there on Friday down to 55 degrees. So 61 today. Warming back up and look at that roller coaster ride. Yeah, it's, springtime. It's all over the place. Yeah, coaster, springtime yeah. in Montana. Well, grocery prices see a record breaking spike as shoppers continue to stock up. Nearly one in three Americans are planning to take a road trip this summer as gas prices remain low. Jane King is in New York with those stories and more. The coronavirus pandemic has caused many Americans to cancel their summer vacations.
but some see low gas prices as an opportunity to save and still go on a road trip. 31% of Americans say they do plan to go on a summer trip, a road trip this year, that's according to Gas Buddy, and that number could rise. 51% said they still haven't made a decision about their summer travel plans. Only 18% said they definitely had ruled out a road trip. Well, shoppers in the U.S. may have undergone a bit of sticker shock at the grocery store last month. The Bureau of Labor Statistics released its latest consumer price index, which found grocery prices saw a record-breaking spike in April. BLS reported the index for food at home, so that's food items purchased in grocery stores, increased by 2.6 percent. That's the largest monthly increase since February of 1974. A Walmart will give a $300 bonus to its workers as pay bumps to frontline workers expire. The company's hired more than 200,000 people since announcing its first cash bonus. And the human cost of producing 99 cent chickens and affordable burgers during the pandemic is pushing meat packers to eye changes that will likely make American meat more expensive. Some plants were already running slower than normal to adhere to social distancing, but companies are also considering how best to redesign their operations to prevent infections, including automating some lines, and the likely result is higher prices of chicken. From New York, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. This half hour on Montana this morning, Helena seniors are getting a better idea of what graduation could look like. What school board members figured out. A last political group met with some Deer Lodge business owners to criticize the governor's response to the COVID-19 crisis. And later relief for ranchers. What our state's congressional delegation is doing to help cattle producers. Montana this morning starts now. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. It is Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. I'm Shannon New. I'm Jason Laird. Uh, still some lingering showers today, but yeah. not nearly the soaker that not we the had snow yesterday. snow right now that we saw that yesterday. That was not <laughs> anticipated. I mean, I knew it was going to snow a little bit yesterday morning, but we're sitting there having lunch and look out the window. <sighs> See, that's the worst Big thing about the weather forecast. Well, forecasting weather for a living is it's always there to remind you you're wrong <laughs> all the time. So if you mess it up, it's there. There mm -hmm. it is to remind you just in just your like, face. Hey, by the way, yeah, no, it's kind of funny listening to him. because I'm like, <laughs> oh, pretty, you know, I'm inside eating lunch, whatever. Pretty snowflakes, you know, and he's uh, grumbling <laughs> over here. I'm swearing out the window. Like yeah, it was supposed to be done by now. Well, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's yeah. the thing. It's like you, you base your forecast off of forecast models, you know, which are all just uh, an Predicting algorithm. the future. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, at least it at least there was moisture. You know right. that that was right. That Cloudy was right. start to the day <laughs> here today. U.S. Bank iCam reading in 37 degrees. Cut Bank 33. Glasgow right now pretty mild at 41. Today we're a little bit more mild out there. 57 with a couple of lingering showers. Might even see a couple little cracks of thunder out there as we do have a little bit warmer air to deal with. Uh, temperature gauge at the airport down, but 40 in Lincoln. Clancy at 39. Hour by hour forecast 61 for your daytime high. We'll hit that later in the day. We'll have all the details on your extended forecast coming up very shortly. Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. There are two new coronavirus cases in Montana. That brings our statewide total to 460. Right now, just 19 of those are active. State officials reported new cases Tuesday in Cascade and Bighorn counties. The Cascade County case involves a man in his 30s. In Bighorn County, a woman in her 20s tested positive. 425 cases, or about 92% of the state total, are considered recovered. Helena public school leaders say they're planning for in-person graduation ceremonies with some restrictions, but could still have to make some changes based on coronavirus. Superintendent Tyler Ream laid out the district's plans on Tuesday night at a school board meeting. They're currently looking at holding full school graduations for Helena and Capitol High School. Each student would be allowed two guests at the ceremonies, but they would also be streamed online. Reem said all students and guests would have to sit at least six feet apart, wear masks and confirm that they haven't been experiencing any COVID symptoms. If the situation with the virus becomes worse, the district could hold two smaller ceremonies per school. Reem said this plan will rely on students and families following guidelines. We know air travel took a hit the last couple of months. At Great Falls International Airport, traffic was down 95% in April. If you're going to be traveling, you need to check with your airlines. They are cutting back on flights. We spoke with the Great Falls International Airport director, John Faulkner, and he says book early and check your flights often. 
So if you're considering a flight, make sure you're booking early um, so that you can get in there and navigate the, uh, the flight schedules. This is a tremendous, tremendously challenging time for the airlines. And I think small, small communities like us, it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out the other side of this. I think there'll be uh, tremendous um, reductions in the amount of uh, airline service that's available to small communities. Now, it's also a good idea to check with your airline to see if they're requiring masks at all during flights. A group claims Governor Steve Bullock's coronavirus restrictions went too far and will have long-term impacts on the state's economy. MTN's John Amy reports the group met with business owners in Deer Lodge to hear their concerns. Some people are taking aim at coronavirus policies they claim have gone too far, even to the point of violating constitutional rights. These are God-given rights. We don't look to the government to give us those rights, so we, we're going to protect them. Members of Start Montana, which refers to itself as a grassroots group that is critical of Governor Steve Bullock's coronavirus policy, stopped in Deer Lodge to hear concerns from some local business owners. Though Start claims to be nonpartisan, it does have support from state Republicans. The voices of the people who operate businesses in Montana were not being heard, period. The governor was, was you know, tone deaf to that. Some Deer Lodge business owners are worried about the small town's economic future. I mean, we've already seen three, four, five businesses in town not able to open back up. Um, that's just going to continue. Start Montana argues the governor overreacted to the coronavirus threat and has hurt the state's economy for a long time to come. Why are we living in fear? Fear doesn't prevent you from dying. Fear prevents you from living, and that's what's happening to a lot of businesses here. And people are going to lose their businesses as a result of the decisions that were made. And some people involved in this grassroots movement feel like they have the right to even defy the governor's executive order through civil disobedience. Civil obedience does not mean any kind of violence whatsoever. It just means that at this point, we need to let people know that we're going to open up Main Street, we're going to open up our businesses right here in Deer Lodge. In Deer Lodge, John Amy, MTN News. It's 535 on your Wednesday morning. Coming up on Montana this morning, a big announcement from Special Olympics Montana about their summer games. We'll have details next. And later in your weather forecast, kind of a roller coaster ride, some rain and sun and rain and sun. As for your fishing forecast, well, Still some rain today, but clearer skies as Thursday rolls around back to the rain and clearing up on Saturday. Today will be in the high 50s with a couple of showers. More on your forecast coming up. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. It's 538 on your Wednesday. Thanks for staying with us. Special Olympics Montana announced on Facebook Live that their 2020 state summer games will be entirely virtual in response to the coronavirus. The games will begin on May 18th and run through July 17th. There will be four two week sessions and one week break for July 4th. Each session is called a quarter and there will be new events released for each quarter with three levels of difficulty to account for the varying ability levels. Instruction and video examples for the first quarter events are already posted on the Special Olympics Montana website, SOMT.org. Some of those events include the 10 yard dash and squats. Sports Vice President Jamie Wood says that a positive to switching to virtual games this year is that more people will be able to participate. We have a lot of teams that do attend our, our traditional state summer games, but for some it's just too far. It's too much to travel. It's too much stimulation for some of our athletes. This is an opportunity for them to maybe join in on a competition that normally they didn't. So we encourage everyone to get involved. Opening ceremonies will happen on Sunday, May 17th. Closing ceremonies will be Wednesday, July 22nd. Both of those will be on Special Olympic Montana's Facebook and YouTube pages. 
Well, we'd like to remind you this morning again about a new effort to help Montanans recover from the financial impacts of COVID-19. The Rebound Montana Relief Fund is a partnership between MTN, A and B West Philanthropies and the Montana Community Foundation. This isn't the first time the three of us have teamed up to help Montanans in need. Our Montana Wildfire Relief Fund raised more than $600,000 to help rural volunteer fire departments, all thanks to contributions from viewers like you. This year, in the wake of the devastating impact of coronavirus, and what it's had on families and businesses, we're renewing that partnership. We've created a statewide fund to provide safety net funding for rural and tribal communities adversely affected by the outbreak. If you'd like to contribute, you can go to KRTV or KXLH.com slash relief. There you can access various funds that have all been set up. MTN and AMB West Philanthropies will match the first $150,000 donated to the Montana COVID-19 Relief Fund. Up next to your weather forecast, well, we're tracking uh, rain and sun and about everything imaginable. As for the current drought conditions right now, about 29.5% uh, of the state is under slightly dry conditions right now. We should start to see some improvement on that, though, as uh, those recent rain showers have moved throughout the state. Kind of a cool start here, but we'll be well into the 50s as the day plays out. Well into the 50s as well in the capital. Your forecast is next. Nope. Now, here's your storm tracker weather forecast with Jason Laird. Good morning, friends. Hopefully your Wednesday's off to a great start. Well, we do have the possibility of a couple of afternoon thunderstorms making their way throughout central Montana. So the severe weather outlook, uh, non-severe thunderstorms, but a couple of cracks of thunder not out of the question. Keeping an eye on some patchy fog this morning, seeing a little bit in northeastern Montana. We've got a lot of humidity in the air uh, due to the recent rain throughout the area, hence why we are going to see a little bit of morning fog throughout the area. Right now, relatively dry. A couple of showers into south central Montana. We will continue to see some rain today as the day plays out. So we'll start out kind of cloudy, a few little isolated showers throughout the area. Best chance will be uh, this afternoon. And as those systems especially make their way into eastern Montana, hit some of that warmer air, a couple little pop up thunderstorms not out of the question. But today's systems not nearly as widespread, not nearly as long lasting. However, just couple of showers still in the forecast today. As for daytime highs, finally starting to climb the charts to almost seasonal averages. 57 in Great Falls, 61 in the capital, looking at the mid 60s throughout the eastern plains today. Tonight, finally starting to drop things uh, or keep things above freezing, I should say. 35 degrees in Great Falls, 39 in the capital, looking at the mid 30s along the high line. So you can start to put those plants back outside and remove the blankets if you had to cover anything up. Tomorrow, uh, possibility of a couple little thunderstorms, but everything's staying well out of our area. The reason behind that a nice little ridge of high pressure is going to build, and that's going to keep skies relatively clear throughout north central Montana. And we'll start to see those temperatures bump up a couple of notches. 65 degrees in Gray Falls in the 70s throughout eastern Montana. And here's what we're looking at. So tomorrow, uh, for the most part, we've got a nice little ridge of high pressure. That's going to keep uh, skies relatively clear and all that moisture at bay. However, later in the day, we are going to have an area of low pressure track in. That's not going to impact us until Friday, but it is going to likely kick off another round of showers throughout central Montana. So cloudy and showers on Friday. But as we head into the weekend, more high pressure is going to build. That's going to keep us mild on Saturday. But unfortunately, that roller coaster ride continues. So on Sunday, another area of low pressure is going to move in. That's going to get us cloudy and draw a little bit more moisture our way. Here's how all of that translates over the next seven days. 57 degrees today, lingering showers, mostly sunny, and then the rain returns on Friday. Looking good, though, right now on Saturday. We're going to have plenty of sunshine to go around there. And then uh, Sunday again, we're going to be seeing some rain return to the forecast. This one looks to stick around at least through Tuesday. Shannon? All right, thanks, Jason. It's 546 now. Wall Street dropped on Tuesday amid worries about warnings from health experts. The Dow fell 457 points. The Nasdaq was down 189. The S&P 500 lost 60. Here at home, Montana Senator John Tester is rolling out what he calls a rancher relief program, a trio of bills and actions designed to help hard hit Montana cattle producers get better prices and markets for their product. Montana's other U.S. Senator, Republican Steve Daines, also on board with those efforts. Tester and Republican Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa introduced a bill to require large meat packers to buy at least half of their cattle on the cash market. Tester says it would make it harder for packers to manipulate 
manipulate prices and increases the price paid to feedlots and producers. Tester also is pushing to include language in any upcoming coronavirus relief bills to allow Montana meat producers to sell their product outside the state. Danes and Tester are renewing a push to reinstate country of origin labeling for meat produced in America. You can look at me, I eat a lot of meat, and I'll tell you, if I knew it was coming from the United States versus Brazil or Argentina, I'm, I'm picking up that package that has made USA on it every time. And Tester says he hopes there is enough bipartisan pressure on Senate leadership to take up those proposals. Well, still to come here on Montana this morning, an unpiloted craft has left the International Space Station. We'll tell you about its mission next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. It's 550, 10 minutes to the top of the hour on your Wednesday. An unpiloted Cygnus cargo craft that delivered several tons of supplies and scientific experiments to the International Space Station departed from it on Monday. Yeah, the cargo craft was built by Northrop Grumman, a global aerospace and defense technology company. It arrived at the station February 18th, three days after its launch from NASA's flight facility in Virginia. Yeah, flight controllers on the ground sent commands ro to robotically detach it from the earth facing port of the module up there. They huh. were able to maneuver it into place and release it from the robotic arm. NASA's station commander monitored the systems as it moved away from the laboratory up there. So the craft will help with fire detection. It will also deploy a series of payloads. So a lot of that is above huh. my like understanding of what all of that does, but it's so fascinating. Well, what it sounds me. like to me and what, what <laughs> amazes me Mm -hmm. is that all these kids that have played video games all their life now can be employed by NASA. Totally. Yes. Right? Yeah. You think about it, like that's mm -hmm. primo training anymore. Right. Video yeah. games work for NASA. There you go. I mean, there's a little more to it, but nah, no. nah, it's gotta be the same. Like just steering. <laughs> That's always your... just so fascinating. I love, I love when we have these space stories just because yeah. it's so fascinating to me well, and to amazing. see what they're exploring, see how they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like to like pre-program everything to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, oh my gosh, it's, it's crazy. We used to, when I lived in Colorado Springs, we had the uh, uh, space symposium, yes. which is super cool. And there was a class that they would have for students or whatever that were in like various tech or technology classes mm -hmm. where they could go in and like program Martian rovers Ooh. to like, conduct little jobs or whatever. And it was so crazy to watch that how that would happen because even something that simplistic, like the amount of brain power and the amount of like algorithms that mm -hmm. go into making that little rover do its thing is right. just impressive, mm -hmm. you know, so. Sure is, yeah, we talked about it yesterday, but our robotics teams in Montana, yeah. you know, yeah. essentially working on something that could potentially in the yeah. future do something like what they're Super doing cool. here. So right very on. cool. So. Yeah, above my pay grade, oh, that's major. for sure. Yep. <laughs> well, on the weather scene, still going to be tracking some lingering showers today, not nearly the soaker and uh, no snow today. Ooh. Of course, now going that I out say on that, a limb. I was going to say now that, that huh? I say that it's going <laughs> to snow all day because that's just what the weather does. Giving you an idea of some of the rain stats from yesterday, uh, picked up just shy of a half an inch in Great Falls. So this month we're sitting at about two inches, puts us above uh, normal, quite a bit above normal and above just above for the year as well. As for the capital, uh, nothing reading in. I'm pretty sure there was a couple sprinkles in that area yesterday, but uh, Evidently nothing reading in yesterday. Of course, it might because that gauge being down at the True, airport yeah. too. Anyways, mowing forecast here today. Uh, here's what we're looking at over the next few. Probably not a great one today as we are still tracking more rain. A little bit better conditions Thursday, Friday. However, there still is some showers in the mix. So 57 today. Let the roller coaster ride commence. You can <laughs> see we're back up to 66 and then down to the 50s again on Friday. All right, time now is 5:53. Your farm and ranch report with the Montana Ag Network is next. This half hour on Montana this morning, Helena seniors are getting a better idea of what their graduation could look like. What school board members figured out at a meeting last night. Plus, during a time when many people are out of work, we're looking at some industries hiring right now. And later, we have an update on a Great Falls apartment fire earlier this week. Montana this morning starts now. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning to you. I'm Shannon New. Thanks for being with us on this Wednesday. I'm Jason Laird. Uh, no snow today, hopefully. 
now that After you say, I say that, that yeah, you're going to jinx still, yourself. Yes. Uh, no, still tracking some lingering moisture. Also mm -hmm. some patchy fog out there in some areas okay. this morning. We've got so much, you know, moisture in the air from all the rain recently, right. that evaporation and a uh, little bit foggy in some areas, it's not like widespread. It's dreary lately. It is. It's, kinda, like that's it's, a good it's, it's like Scotland weather. It is a little like, it's like that's Scotland true. weather. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be all green and pretty. That'd be good if it got all greened yeah, up. Well, yeah. it pretty much is. Uh, check it out. 36 degrees right now in Gray Falls. Cut Bank sitting in at 35 and Lewis down at about 38 hour by hour forecast for Great Falls will be warming back up into the 50s here today. Uh, kind of cloudy and again more showers expected this afternoon. As for the Opportunity Bank ICAM in the capital again the uh, temperature gauge there at the airport is down right now unfortunately but 40 degrees in Lincoln 37 in Clancy. Hour by hour forecast a little tiny bit warmer in the capital today. Uh, still going to be seeing a couple sporadic showers throughout the day as we'll break that down a little bit more detail momentarily. So lingering rain warming up on Thursday. However, uh, we are going to be a bit of a roller coaster ride this weekend. Partly sunny with some rain. We'll tell you more about that extended forecast shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. It is six o'clock here on your Wednesday. Well, there are two new coronavirus cases in Montana to tell you about this morning. That brings the statewide total to 460. Right now, just 19 of those are active. State officials reported new cases Tuesday in Cascade and Bighorn counties. The Cascade County case involves a man in his 30s. In Bighorn County, a woman in her 20s tested positive. 425 cases or about 92% of the state's total are considered recovered. The White House and the CDC seem to have some different ideas on how the country should be reopened. Last week, the Associated Press released step-by-step -step guidelines from the CDC that an official said was kept from the public by the White House. Now, although the Trump administration's plan does follow some of that advice outlined by the CDC, there is a key difference in the approach. The CDC's plan advocates for a coordinated national response with the idea that the virus will resurge. Meanwhile, the White House leaves some decisions to the state leaders. The director of the CDC says a revised version of the organization's plan will be made public soon. Here at home, Helena public school leaders say they're planning for in-person graduation ceremonies with some restrictions, but they could still have to make some changes based on COVID-19. Superintendent Tyler Reeb laid out the district's plans on Tuesday night at a school board meeting. They're currently looking at holding full school graduations for Helena and Capitol High School. Each student would be allowed two guests at the ceremonies. They would also be streamed online. Reem said all students and guests would have to sit at least six feet apart, wear masks, and confirm they haven't been experiencing COVID symptoms. If the situation with the virus becomes worse, the district could hold two smaller ceremonies per school. Reem said this plan will rely on students and families following guidelines. We would be asking a lot, not just of, of you know, our, our families who are going to be attending, but really of our graduates um, and Trisians before, during, and after the ceremonies. And Reem said health leaders told him it wouldn't be advisable to hold indoor ceremonies of this size. So they, if they have to postpone the graduations for weather, they will plan to hold them the following Saturday. As the state starts to reopen, employment officials are getting Montanans back on their feet. Express employment professionals say they help both employers and job seekers in the Great Falls area. They've been hard at work through this outbreak, connecting essential workers and those in skilled trades with employers. Brian McKinney with Express Employment says associates have been working remotely, but are still hiring. We have a, a person that comes to us with uh, really desirable skills. We'll actually advocate for them and we will reach out to employers while they're actually in our office and try to land them a position. The office also has free online classes for those wanting to sharpen their job seeking skills. They're connecting employers with qualified workers every day through remote hiring and phone interviews. McKinney suggests applying for online work through the agency's website. We have a link to that on our website. Well, whether you've been fired, laid off, maybe furloughed, millions of Americans are in need of work right now. Luckily, there are a number of employers looking to hire right now. Pizza places, fast food restaurants are posting positions. One Taco Bell even putting wanted flyers in customers' bags. And let's not forget about all that online shopping that people have been doing from home. FedEx has over 850 positions looking to hire. Discount places like Dollar General and Dollar Tree 
Many of those have remained open during the outbreak and they're still hiring. Pharmacies are another good place to look. CVS has reported sales through the roof lately. With so many offices and buildings forced to close, demands for private security to watch over these places have also gone up. One company, Securitas, is encouraging those who have been furloughed from other jobs to apply. Some other places you could check out include education, technology, entertainment, and manufacturing. The multi-million dollar legal dispute between Lewis and Clark County and the state's public employee retirement system is now moving forward in district court. The case stems from the county's separation from Pureview Health Center in March. When Pureview became independent, about 60 employees became ineligible for the state retirement system. The Montana Public Employee Retirement Administration, or MEPRA, said that uh, created an unfunded liability and that they expected the county to make a payment of up to $5 million to cover it. Last month, the Montana Supreme Court declined to immediately hear the case, saying it should go through a lower court. They then filed in district court, seeking an order confirming it has the authority to demand payment from the county. On the same day, the Montana Association of Counties filed its own complaint, asking the court to find it doesn't have that authority. If this action by Impera were to stand, governments would grind to a standstill, and that is absolutely unacceptable. The millions of dollars at stake in this action is not an insignificant amount to our members, retirees, or our public employers. This dispute has also grown to include Cascade County. Irmpa says that separation from Alluvian Health also created an unfunded liability, and they're asking for payment up to $3 million. Following up on a late Monday night apartment fire in Great Falls, the Red Cross is helping out a few people who have been displaced. Great Falls Fire Rescue tells us the cause is still undetermined right now. Crews arrived on scene to find flames coming out of the six-unit apartment building around 10.30 Monday night. Fire Rescue tells us not all of the units were occupied. Most of the damage was contained to one apartment. No injuries were reported. It's 606 here on your Wednesday. Coming up on Montana this morning, a debate over PSC emails leads to a lawsuit. We'll have details next. Later in your weather forecast, tracking some lingering rain today to give you an idea of where the river gauges are flowing. A little bit high coming off of the Rocky Mountain front here. No flood watches warnings at this time. We are again going to see cloudy skies today with a couple little pockets of heavier showers, maybe even a little crack of thunder here and there. Your detailed forecast is coming up shortly. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. It is Wednesday morning and 6.09. MTN News reported back in February on the unauthorized release of Public Service Commissioner Roger Koopman's emails and public posting on a conservative website. Now, as MTN's Mike Dennison reports, the disputes and investigations over that incident are still underway, and the PSC is now suing media outlets over their request to see related documents. As we reported in February, someone at the PSC acquired Commissioner Koopman's office emails without his knowledge and gave them to Northwest Liberty News, a website in Kalispell. Since then, fellow Commissioner Randy Pinocchi of Sun River has admitted requiring Koopman's emails, but says he had nothing to do with their public release. Koopman doesn't buy it and, last week, asked the PSC to begin censure proceedings against Pinocchi. Having a a fellow commissioner viewing my emails without my knowledge is no different than wiretapping my phone or bugging my office or putting a surveillance camera behind my statue of Patrick Henry. I feel very violated by that, very violated by the terrible things that have been said about me. But the PSC's other members refused to consider Koopman's request. PSC Chairman Brad Johnson of East Helena told MTN News that it's not appropriate for the PSC to publicly discipline its elected members. The Koopman emails contained some personal information, but mostly had critical comments he'd made about fellow commissioners. Koopman says posting the emails was a form of retaliation and that he's consulted with lawyers about possible legal action. But in the meantime, at least four news organizations, not including MTN, have asked for documents and emails related to the dispute. Now the PSC has filed suit, asking a state district judge in Helena to determine which documents can be released and which may not because they may violate privacy protections for certain PSC employees. 
MTN News also has learned that the PSC is continuing to investigate whether and how PSC employees may have distributed Koopman's emails to the Kalispell website. Pinocchi didn't return a call seeking comment, but posted on Facebook that Koopman is being dishonest and should resign. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And we'll be back right after this. And welcome back to Montana this morning. Time now about 614 on your clock in Glacier National Park remains without a timeline for reopening. Yeah, a representative from the park says that they have not been given any tentative dates for letting people back into the park. A spokesperson for Glacier said that they will post updates about the facilities and operations on their website and social media. People should be prepared to only be able to park in designated areas and only have access to marked trails. And there is also a possibility that restrooms and other facilities will have limited or no access when the park uh, first reopens. They will also ask people to maintain social distancing of at least about six feet or so from each other when the park does reopen in accordance with CDC guidelines. And a lot of people eager to get outside, yeah. get back to the parks, get back to camping, things mm -hmm. like that. It will be interesting because Glacier has seen more and more visitors every year. Right, right. They've been trying to figure out how to still <laughs> best have a visitor experience, best right. not get too crowded. So it'll be interesting how all of this yeah, plays no into those plans. Yeah, too. especially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. keeping distance and everything. I mean, the one thing with the outdoors is, you know, like we were talking earlier with camping and being outdoors. Right. The last thing you want to do is be all close to everybody. Close to everybody Kinda else. Get exactly. out and about. Right. right. So yep. <laughs> good news there, I suppose. But uh, on the weather scene here this morning, we are tracking the possibility of a few light thunderstorms this afternoon. So severe weather outlook today, pretty minimal, but there is again that possibility of a couple of little cracks of thunder this afternoon as we've got some warmer air to work with. Very saturated air early this morning, so there is some patchy fog out there. Not bad, not overly dense. We're seeing slightly limited visibilities around Lewistown, a little bit up into northeastern Montana, something you might run across here through the morning hours. 36 degrees in Great Falls right now, seeing some showers into south central Montana, and we'll continue to see a couple of little isolated showers throughout the day. Possibly going to see a couple thunderstorms from basically Lewistown east, that will be the best potential, I guess, for those stronger storms to develop here. And I shouldn't even call them strong. Just a couple of thunderstorms that maybe kick off a little bit of small hail, that sort of thing, as we've got some warmer air to work with today to kind of kick those off. Daytime high starting to climb the charts, 57 degrees in Great Falls, 61 in the capital, looking at the low to mid uh, 60s throughout the eastern plains. Finally staying above freezing tonight as well, 35 in Great Falls, more mild in the capital at 39 degrees. So finally, Able to leave those plants outside, maybe pull the blankets if you had to cover things up. As for the severe weather outlook tomorrow, very, very minimal reason behind that high pressure is going to rebuild across the state. That's going to allow for a lot more sunshine and warmer temperatures. Check it out. 65 degrees tomorrow on tap 66 in the capital, looking at a couple of 70s throughout the eastern plains. So here's how that looks. Let me give you a little bit broader view. High pressure is going to build on Thursday, pretty weak high pressure and Here's where that roller coaster ride continues. We're going to see warm and then Friday another area of low pressure is going to move in. That's going to draw a little bit of moisture our way and kick off some isolated showers yet again. But the good news is Saturday more sun as high pressure builds. However, one day only sale on Sunday. We're going to see another area of low pressure start to move in off the coast. That's going to get us a little bit cloudy on Sunday and kick off a couple of showers throughout the area. Best chance for rain is going to be Monday, Tuesday of this next week. Six to ten day outlook remaining on that cooler trend, especially throughout western Montana, and more moisture than average is expected. So over the next seven days, here's how all of that plays out for us. We're going to be looking at 57 degrees, lingering showers today, mostly sunny tomorrow, but then again, rain returns as we head toward the weekend. 55 degrees there, quite a bit cooler, but rebounding again on Saturday, which is good. Now, despite a couple of showers moving in on Sunday, we're going to see temperatures at about 71 degrees, right on track with room temperature, but more widespread rain first part of this next week, Shannon. All right, thanks, Jason. It's 618 coming up on Montana this morning. The great goat escape, an unusual sight in one California neighborhood. We'll have that story next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader.
Welcome back. It's 623. <laughs> so for a few minutes on Tuesday, it looked like the goats were invading one Northern California neighborhood. A homeowners association in San Jose brings in the goats now and then to actually eat dead grass on the hillside. Yeah, but yesterday the goats managed to <laughs> knock over the electric oh fence boy. and take a leisurely <laughs> stroll through the streets. Now neighbors had oh to no. open up a side gate and lead the goats back to where they were supposed to be. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but there was some minor damage in a few yards. Yeah, you could, they were eating maybe <laughs> some at, things they weren't supposed look to at be eating. Get like, away Whoa! from my car! <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of goats, That's though. That's a fair it's amount a of, goats. of goats. And this is their leader right there. Apparently, the fearless yes. like, Come on, guys! This way! This way! Oh, and then he <laughs> headbutts one of them. <laughs> Got to keep them in yeah, line. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Got to keep them in I, line. That's a good idea, though, to use those goats to bring yeah. in to eat dead grass and things no, like that. Really like, that idea. sounds like a great idea. That's a lot of goats, though. Did I ever though. tell you about the donkeys that live in Canyon City, Colorado? No. Or not Canyon. Is it Canyon? No, Cripple Creek. Cripple, Cripple Creek. I think you did, actually. Yeah, they have donkeys. That. So it, it's an old mining town. Mm -hmm. And way back when, when the mine closed down, they let the donkeys go. Sure. So now they're just kind of wild and they huh. live in the town and they just roam the town all the time. Interesting. Yeah, they yeah. destroy people's like rain gutters and eat their stuff all the time. Yeah. Oh. It's an awful deal, That's... but it's kind of funny because they'll just be driving through town and there's and a bunch of wild donkeys. There's a donkey. Yeah. Huh. Kind of love it. That would be a, <laughs> especially if you've never been there and you're driving. Yeah, right, exactly. You're, like, well, you're not what's expecting happening like, here. Why are there donkeys yeah. everywhere? <laughs> like, right. <laughs> a jailbreak on the donkeys. Yes. <laughs> uh, a little bit of sun out there, but it is going to be a relatively cloudy day today today with some isolated showers kicking off uh, later in the day. Now with all the rain though, check out the pollen forecast. Mm. Not bad at all. I've Pretty been low today. Again. Um, you're just I don't know. I'm I, just weird. I yeah. don't know. It's probably not the pollen. It's uh, probably low you. today. Strong possibility. <laughs> low today, quite a bit higher tomorrow as high pressure rebuilds and we're going to get kind of warm Friday, Saturday, not terrible, kind of rated at medium. Uh, next couple of days, roller coaster ride 57 up to the 60s, right on track with average, and then we kind of fall down a little bit on Friday as another batch of rain moves in. So lingering showers today, more sun though tomorrow and 57 on Friday in the capital. 625 on your Wednesday morning, Montana. This morning we'll be back in just a moment, but first we're honoring the class of 2020. Here are a few of this year's seniors in our Congrats to Grads feature. This half hour on Montana this morning, Helena seniors are getting a better idea of what their graduation could look like. We'll have more on what school board members figured out at a meeting last night. A political group met with some Deer Lodge business owners to criticize the governor's response to the COVID-19 crisis. And later, another incident inside Yellowstone National Park as a woman was burned on a thermal feature. Details are just ahead. Montana This Morning starts now. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Guess what I'm doing today? What are you doing today? Oh, you're getting a haircut. haircut today for are the first excited? time in months. I am excited. Very excited. Yes. It'll be relaxing. I'll look all fresh for everybody look in the morning. Look all styling? Yeah. Well, gonna, are you hopefully. doing anything crazy, like getting it dyed pink or something? Yeah, pink, purple highlights. I think management would really like oh, that. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally justified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, just hopefully just it won't be up. that much of a notice oh, because that's okay. the idea is to make it so it's not I mean, noticeable. I, yeah. That's one but. nice thing about being a girl during quarantine. At least you don't have to chop your hair all the time. Yeah, but the, if you do highlights and stuff, oh, it, the, the grow yeah. out can be noticeable. Yeah. I require yeah. a lot of work. You so do, yeah, it's true. I, uh, <laughs> it was a little brutal. It was touch and go there for a little while oh, in yes. the terms of uh, hair maintenance. <laughs> kind of a cloudy start to the day. <laughs> U.S. Bank ICAM sitting at 36 degrees right now. Cut Bank 35 and 41 in Glasgow. If you don't have our Storm Tracker weather app, you can download it. Get your hour by hour forecast, and that's going to show you cloudy with a couple of showers. A little bit windy at times today. Not bad, though, especially by central Montana standards. A little bit more sunshine in the capital. Fortunately, the temperature gauge at the airport still broken. Hour by hour forecast looking at uh, cloudy conditions with 
couple spotty showers throughout the area. As for your forecast headlines, moving forward, some lingering rain on tap primarily this afternoon. Might even see a little crack at the or hear a crack of thunder and uh, are going to start a warming trend. However, more showers in the mix. We'll tell you about that uh, weather forecast coming up very shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. It is 630 on this Wednesday, May 13th, and there are two new coronavirus cases to report in Montana. That brings our statewide total to 460. Right now, just 19 of those are active. State health officials reported new cases Tuesday in Cascade and Bighorn counties. The Cascade County case involves a man in his 30s. In Bighorn County, a woman in her 20s tested positive. About 92% of the state's total are considered recovered. The White House and CDC seem to have different ideas on how the country should be reopened. Last week, the Associated Press released step-by-step -step guidelines from the CDC that an official said was kept from the public by the White House. Although the Trump administration's plan does follow some of the advice outlined by the CDC, a key difference is the approach. The CDC's plan advocates for a coordinated national response with the idea that the virus will resurge. Meanwhile, the White House leaves decisions to state leaders. The director of the CDC says a revised version of the organization's plan will soon be made public. Helena Public School leaders say they're planning for in-person graduation ceremonies with some restrictions, but they could still have to make some changes based on coronavirus. Superintendent Tyler Ream laid out the district's plans on Tuesday night at a school board meeting. They're currently looking at holding full school graduations for Helena and Capitol High School. Each student would be allowed two guests at the ceremonies, but they would also be streamed online. Reem said all students and guests would have to sit at least six feet apart, wear masks, and confirm they haven't been experiencing any COVID symptoms. If the situation with the virus becomes worse, the district could hold two smaller ceremonies per school. Reem said this plan will rely on students and families following guidelines. We know air travel took a hit the last couple of months. At Great Falls International Airport, traffic was down 95% in April. If you're going to be traveling, you need to check with your airlines because they are cutting back on flights. We spoke with Great Falls International Airport Director John Faulkner. He says book early and check your flights often. So if you're considering a flight, make sure you're booking early um, so that you can get in there and navigate the, uh, the flight schedules. This is a tremendous, tremendously challenging time for the airlines. And I think small, small communities like us, it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out the other side of this. I think there'll be uh, tremendous um, reductions in the amount of uh, airline service that's available to small communities. Now, it's also a good idea to check with your airline to see if they require masks during flights. A group claims Governor Steve Bullock's coronavirus restrictions went too far and will have long-term impacts on the state's economy. MTS John Amy reports the group met with business owners in Deer Lodge to hear their concerns. Some people are taking aim at coronavirus policies they claim have gone too far, even to the point of violating constitutional rights. These are God-given rights. We don't look to the government to give us those rights. So we, we're going to protect them. Members of Start Montana, which refers to itself as a grassroots group that is critical of Governor Steve Bullock's coronavirus policy, stopped in Deer Lodge to hear concerns from some local business owners. Though Start claims to be nonpartisan, it does have support from state Republicans. The voices of the people who operate businesses in Montana were not being heard, period. The governor was, was you know, tone deaf to that. Some Deer Lodge business owners are worried about the small town's economic future. I mean, we've already seen three, four, five businesses in town not able to open back up. Um, that's just going to continue. Start Montana argues the governor overreacted to the coronavirus threat and has hurt the state's economy for a long time to come. Why are we living in fear? Fear doesn't prevent you from dying. Fear prevents you from living, and that's what's happening to a lot of businesses here. And people are going to lose their businesses as a result of the decisions that were made. And some people involved in this grassroots movement feel like they have the right to even defy the governor's executive order through civil disobedience. Civil obedience does not mean any kind of violence whatsoever. It just means that at this point, we need to let people know that we're going to open up Main Street, we're going to open up our businesses right here in Deer Lodge. In Deer Lodge, John Amy, MTN News.
A woman who entered Yellowstone National Park illegally was badly burned. Park officials say it happened after she fell through a thermal feature near Old Faithful. They say the woman was backing up to take a photo and fell into it. A spokeswoman says it's unclear exactly which hot spring or other feature she may have stumbled into. The woman then left Old Faithful and drove north towards Mammoth. Park rangers stopped her about a mile south of Mammoth Hot Spring. The woman was taken to the Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center by helicopter. Yellowstone has been closed to visitors since March 30th. MTN News reported back in February on the unauthorized release of Public Service Commissioner Roger Koopman's emails and public posting on a conservative website. Now, as MTN's Mike Dennison reports, the disputes and investigations over that incident are still underway, and the PSC is now suing media outlets over their request to see related documents. As we reported in February, someone at the PSC acquired Commissioner Koopman's office emails without his knowledge and gave them to Northwest Liberty News, a website in Kalispell. Since then, fellow Commissioner Randy Pinocchi of Sun River has admitted requiring Koopman's emails, but says he had nothing to do with their public release. Koopman doesn't buy it and, last week, asked the PSC to begin censure proceedings against Pinocchi. Having a, a fellow commissioner viewing my emails without my knowledge is no different than wiretapping my phone or bugging my office or putting a surveillance camera behind my statue of Patrick Henry. I feel very violated by that, very violated by the terrible things that have been said about me. But the PSC's other members refused to consider Koopman's request. PSC Chairman Brad Johnson of East Helena told MTN News that it's not appropriate for the PSC to publicly discipline its elected members. The Koopman emails contained some personal information, but mostly had critical comments he'd made about fellow commissioners. Koopman says posting the emails was a form of retaliation and that he's consulted with lawyers about possible legal action. But in the meantime, at least four news organizations, not including MTN, have asked for documents and emails related to the dispute. Now the PSC has filed suit, asking a state district judge in Helena to determine which documents can be released and which may not because they may violate privacy protections for certain PSC employees. MTN News also has learned that the PSC is continuing to investigate whether and how PSC employees may have distributed Koopman's emails to the Kalispell website. Pinocchi didn't return a call seeking comment, but posted on Facebook that Koopman is being dishonest and should resign. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. It's 637 on your Wednesday morning. Coming up on Montana this morning, a big announcement from Special Olympics Montana about their summer games. We'll have those details next. And later in your weather forecast, kind of a roller coaster ride over the next couple of days. Sun and rain and sun and rain. Here's how it all plays out on your fishing forecast. Spotty rain today, more mild Thursday, more rain Friday, dry Saturday, and the story goes on. More on your detailed forecast coming up shortly. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. We're glad to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. It's now 20 minutes to the top of the hour, 640 here on your Wednesday, May 13th. Special Olympics Montana announced on Facebook Live that their 2020 state summer games will be entirely virtual in response to coronavirus. The games will begin on May 18th and run through July 17th. There will be four two-week sessions and a one-week break for July 4th. Each session is called a quarter. There will be new events released for each quarter and three levels of difficulty to account for varying ability levels. Instructions and video examples for the first quarter events are already posted on Special Olympics Montana's website, SOMT.org. Some of those events include the 10-yard dash and squats. Sports Vice President Jamie Wood says that a positive to switching to virtual games this year is that more people will be able to participate. We have a lot of teams that do attend our, our traditional state summer games, but for some it's just too far. It's too much to travel. It's too much stimulation for some of our athletes. This is an opportunity for them to maybe join in on a competition that normally they didn't. So we encourage everyone to get involved. Opening ceremonies will happen on Sunday, May 17th. Closing ceremonies will be Wednesday, July 22nd. Both of those will be on Special Olympics Montana's Facebook and YouTube pages. 
And we want to remind you this morning again about a new effort to help Montanans recover from the financial impacts of COVID-19. The Rebound Montana Relief Fund is a partnership between MTN, AMB West Philanthropies, and the Montana Community Foundation. It isn't the first time the three of us have all teamed up to help Montanans in need. You might remember our Montana Wildfire Relief Fund. It raised more than $600,000 to help rural volunteer fire departments, all thanks to contributions from viewers like you. This year, in the wake of the devastating impact of COVID-19 and the impacts it's had on families and businesses, we're renewing that partnership. We've created a statewide fund to provide safety net funding for rural and tribal communities adversely affected by the outbreak. If you'd like to contribute, you can go to KRTV or KXLH.com relief. There you can access various funds that have been set up MTN and AMB West Philanthropies will match the first $150,000 donated to the Montana COVID-19 Relief Fund. Up next in your weather forecast, we are still tracking some scattered showers here today. Early this morning, a little bit of fog throughout the area as well. South Central Montana seeing a few of those showers early in the day. Temperatures today in the 40s, then we'll finally get back up into the 50s today. Hour by hour forecast for the capital looking at the high 50s, maybe a couple of 60s throughout the area as well. As for your mowing forecast, well, we're still tracking rain, so not that great. A little bit better as we head toward the weekend. Detailed forecast next. Thanks. Well, just about 15 minutes away from 7 o'clock, 645 now. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a good way to do a little social distancing at the same time, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. And travel Maybe, at the same oh, time. Oh, travel at the same yeah. time. There we go. Maybe a new <laughs> RV might be in store, right? <laughs> yeah, according to Pierce RV Supercenter, their sales have been on the upswing. They tell us the rise started two weeks after the coronavirus outbreak started. The owner tells us that ever since local campgrounds were opened, it's been pretty hectic. But if you live in Montana, you may have the upper hand. I know the states open their campgrounds, but the national parks and campgrounds have not opened yet. So with that being said, I think uh, Montanans are going to have a better chance to camp uh, because there's going to be openings. Now he does add that getting parts have actually has actually been a little bit challenging since a lot of their manufacturing and manufacturers have been closed and that's a good point to think about. Even though I'm here to tell you parts for RVs are always hard to yeah, come by in another life. Jason, yeah. I actually used to sell RVs. RVs. Yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. was my first uh, real job out of high school. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine like <laughs> 19 year old me? Selling you walk RVs. up and you see him standing there yeah. trying to sell you something. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Golly, talk about snake oil, right? No, oh, I'm just boy. kidding. No, but, I'm sure uh, you were good at it. Yeah, no, yeah. what better way to like, uh, you know, do a little social distancing because yeah. nobody goes camping to like, you know, hang out with a bunch of people. You go right or, you know, it's your people. direct family family most of the time right. that you would probably be going right. to camp with Unless and things like, me like and that. you avoid them too. You <laughs> know, <more> <laughs> That's what my future has in store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, well, uh, yeah, might, uh, might be a decent weekend for a little bit of camping out there. We are tracking some rain and a couple of showers throughout the area up over the next couple of days, but severe weather outlook for today, non severe thunderstorms on tap. So just a couple of cracks of thunder, not out of the question, especially in eastern Montana. Some morning fog. We've got very saturated air due to all the rain that's uh, moved through the area over the past couple of days. So do expect a little bit of fog out there, primarily in central Montana, northeastern Montana. Uh, bodies of water, that sort of thing. We'll likely see a little bit of morning fog currently sitting at 36 degrees in Great Falls, looking at the upper 30s and even a few low 40s in northeastern Montana. Cloudy for the most part today and afternoon showers nowhere near as widespread or as heavy as yesterday, but some isolated showers are going to continue to make their way throughout central Montana here this afternoon, a couple of which could kick off some uh, maybe weak thunderstorms throughout the area, maybe some little pea sized hail, that sort of thing, and then clearing skies overnight. We'll see daytime highs at 57 today, finally starting to get a little bit more mild and near those more average temperatures. Mid 60s in northeastern Montana. As for tonight, pretty much everything staying above freezing. The cold spot butte there at 32, so much more mild. Should be able to leave the plants outside if you do have a couple of flowers, that sort of thing. Severe weather outlook tomorrow, pretty much non existent, except for southwestern Montana. Maybe a couple little thunderstorms there. We'll continue to see those temperatures warm up, though. 65 in Great Falls, 62 in Lewistown, and looking at the upper 60s in northeastern Montana with a couple of 70s mixed in. So on Thursday, tomorrow, we are going to see some weak high pressure build across the region. That's what's offering up the clear conditions, more mild temperatures. However, an area of low pressure is going to move in. 
on Friday, and that's going to draw a little bit of Pacific moisture away, kick off again a couple of showers and cloudy skies throughout the day. But it's a one day only sale. High pressure is going to return on Saturday. That's going to stick with us throughout the day, uh, burning off a lot of those clouds. However, Sunday, another area of low pressure is going to move in, and that's going to fire another batch of moisture our way as we head into next week. Here's how that translates over the next seven days for us. 57 degrees, lingering showers today, mostly sunny tomorrow, and then again, a couple of showers return on Friday. Friday as none of the little system moves in, but upper 60s as we head toward the weekend, despite a couple of showers returning on Sunday, still looking at 71 degrees and uh, more widespread rain is expected as we head into the new work week. Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. It's 650 now. Wall Street dropped on Tuesday amid worries about warnings from health experts. The Dow fell 457 points. The Nasdaq was down 189. The S&P 500 lost 60. Moderators that help keep us from seeing disturbing videos on Facebook are getting $52 million from the social media giant. It's part of a settlement from a 2018 lawsuit. U.S.-based moderators say repeatedly watching graphic videos like sex abuse, animal cruelty, terrorism and more took its toll. They say Facebook didn't do anything to protect them from psychological damages. Each moderator part of the lawsuit will get $1,000. Those who were diagnosed with conditions can get medical treatment and damages up to $50,000. The social networking giant also says it's removed nearly 5 million posts connected to hate organizations in the first three months of this year. Facebook said it's relying more on technology to help identify and remove hateful content. It's in its latest community standards enforcement report. The company added that it put warning labels on about 50 million pieces of content related to COVID-19. Gunmakers and dealers are fighting a lawsuit that would hold them partially responsible for the Vegas massacre. Usually federal law protects shops and gunmakers when crimes are committed with their products. But a U.S. judge is asking Nevada's highest court to decide if state law could override that. The lawsuit names eight firearm manufacturers and several gun shops in Nevada and Utah. A hearing for the case has not yet been set. Here at home, Montana Senator John Tester is rolling out what he calls a rancher relief program. It's a trio of bills and actions designed to help hard hit Montana cattle producers get better prices and markets for their product. Montana's other U.S. Senator, Republican Steve Daines, also on board with the efforts. Tester and Republican Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa introduced a bill to require large meat packers to buy at least half of their cattle on the cash market. Tester says it would make it harder for packers to manipulate prices and increases the price paid to feedlots and producers. Tester also is pushing to include language in any upcoming coronavirus relief bills to allow Montana meat processors to sell their product outside the state. Danes and Tester are renewing a push to reinstate country of origin labeling for meat produced here in America. You can look at me, I eat a lot of meat, and I'll tell you if I knew it was coming from the United States versus Brazil or Argentina, I'm, I'm picking up that package that has made USA on it every time. Tester says he hopes there's enough bipartisan pressure on Senate leadership to take up these proposals. Don't go away. Montana This Morning is back right after this. Coming up, Dr. Tom Inglesby shares his thoughts on reopening risks ahead of his congressional testimony today. Plus, we talk to two former Amazon employees who were fired after speaking out on safety conditions. Coming up on CBS This Morning. Five minutes to the top of the hour, 6.55. Let's get you out the door with today's top stories on this Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. There are two new coronavirus cases in Montana. That brings the statewide total to 460. Right now, just 19 of those are active. State officials reported new cases Tuesday in Cascade and Bighorn counties. The Cascade County case of all involves a man in his 30s. A woman in her 20s tested positive in Bighorn County. About 92% of the state total are considered recovered. Helena Public School leaders say they're planning for in-person graduation ceremonies with some restrictions, but they could still have to make some changes based on coronavirus. Superintendent Tyler Ream says they're currently looking at holding full school graduations for Helena and Capitol High School. Each student would be allowed two guests at the ceremonies. They'd also be streamed online. Reem said all students and guests would have to sit at least six feet apart, wear masks, and confirm that they have 
been, they have not been experiencing any COVID symptoms. There are a number of employers right now looking to hire during this time. Pizza places and fast food restaurants are posting positions. FedEx has over 850 positions that they're looking to hire for. Discount places like Dollar General and Dollar Tree are also looking. And pharmacies are another good place to check. CVS has reported sales have been through the roof. With so many offices and buildings forced to close, demands for private security to watch over these places has also gone up. And following up on a late Monday night apartment fire in Great Falls, the Red Cross is helping out a few people who have been displaced. Fire Rescue tells us the cause is undetermined at this time. Crews arrived on scene to find flames coming out of the six-unit apartment building around 1030 Monday night. Fire Rescue tells us that not all of the units were occupied. Most of the damage was contained to one apartment. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. And on the weather scene, a bit of a roller coaster ride over the next couple of days. Sun and rain and sun and rain is kind of the big talking point. We are tracking some patchy morning fog. Not much in Great Falls, more into central Montana here this morning with some showers to our south. Gardening forecast probably can hold off on the watering uh, for the next couple of days here. Maybe throw a little bit on Saturday, kind of play it by ear, but really uh, pretty minimal amounts needed over the next couple of days as the soil is so saturated. So good news there. Mm -hmm. Pollen forecast very low due to all the recent rain. It's going to kind of ramp up though a little bit on Thursday and staying semi high as we head into the weekend and slightly drier weather moves in as well. So with that said, we are looking at temperatures uh, at about 57 degrees here today. Uh, going to be warming up slightly then on uh, uh, Thursday, but as you know, it's going to taper those temperatures back off as we head into uh, or head closer to the weekend, I should say. As for the capital, sitting at about 61 for a daytime high today, warmer as we head toward uh, Thursday and a little bit then cooler as more rain returns on Friday as well. As for your forecast headlines, again, we are going to be tracking a couple of showers to, uh, throughout the day today. Can't rule out a little crack of thunder here or there. We're going to continue warming up as we head toward Thursday, but again, there is a couple of showers in the mix there. So if you do have plans to get outside this weekend, Saturday's not looking too bad. Sunday again, though, we are tracking another little round of showers moving into the area. All right. Well, finally, today is National Receptionist Day. So yeah. we want to say thank you to our very own receptionist. Tracy who sadly will be leaving us soon. Tracy. Shout out to her. She's you better awesome. better bring us donuts now, Tracy. Just kidding. <laughs> well, should we be bringing her donuts today? Yeah, that it's probably would be day. the better way to yeah. do it. But. No, Tracy's awesome. Thank you, Tracy, for all of you receptionists out there. They do so many of the little things that make right. everything function make on a day to day a basis. So, yeah. good job to all of you. <laughs> all right. Well, our news doesn't stop here. You can get continuous coverage all throughout the day on our website, social media, and our apps. We're back in about 25 minutes or so with a couple of the day's updates, updated headlines, and we'll take another look at that forecast, make sure nothing crazy is headed our way. Stick around. CBS This Morning is next. Trying to think here. Also, Mugshot Monday around yes. the corner, so make sure you get a couple of photos in for that. Get out and have yourself an awesome Wednesday, everybody.